clap. You've got to do the clap. I do it this time. Yeah. Because, oh, there's a lot of pressure on this clap now. Mm -hmm. First, First one, one, one we're <laughs> we go. It's not as easy as it looks, is it, clapping? It's not. Hey, when you're under pressure, the clap, mate, it's not good. Anyway, hope you're good. I hope everyone listening is well. I hope you're having a good day uh, or night or whatever it is, time of whatever it is you're listening to this. Yeah. I've had a lot of nice little few messages recently about the, the podcast. Mainly from my clients, to be fair. Um, I think everyone else probably doesn't bother listening anymore. No. Um, but yeah, saying how they've quite enjoyed the topics we've been talking about and the, and the direction of things that we're talking now. It's not just like, you know, oh, don't worry, you can eat carbs. It's kill you. Yeah, a bit more sort of like, you know, life stuff and, and a bit more, I suppose, you know, fleshing out us as, yeah. you know, flesh you out know. Mike Harrison, the man, you know, you know everything like that. Too boring. You yeah. Know. Find out more about yourself. So, yeah, no, we've been doing that. And I suppose more sort of mindset stuff, in it? I suppose it's just a bit of a... I think when we first started out, we'd have gone a bit wanky, in it, A bit all that sort of shit. But yeah. as you get older, you realise that it's less about the details, more about application. Look, I think the bit about the mindset that we used to hate is just the... I don't know, the way that it, people used to put it across in fitness. Like, I, 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 I don't really know how to frame it, but you, you are right, is that you, the more that you kind of grow older you realize that the majority of pretty much everything is just how you're framing stuff in terms of psychologically i think before with the mindset stuff that we didn't like was it was all like a bit like hippie-ish yeah it, whereas actually what we're saying is well no you've got to actually fucking work hard and, and have a good attitude to it whereas that was a bit more like well manifest it and it happen. was always accompanied with a with an instagram picture of somebody looking out of a window though or yeah, like it was raining. always yeah do you know yeah. like that candid shot it was yeah. always accompanied by that or it's that kind of philosophical kind of pt that yeah. i just i just didn't like i didn't like it because it's like you're out of your depth you're trying to be something that you're not yeah. and you're doing it for likes on instagram because you think that that's you know the the kind of airy fairy like you say caring approach to take i think we're putting our own spin on it anyway sort of you know yeah Sort of, sort of what we're known sort of, for. Sort of what we're known for, isn't it? But, you know? anyway. Sort of sort of call it team individuality. Yeah, sort of, it's a new you know, concept. New concept of design. But um yeah, it's good to see that people have enjoyed it. And um and again we're gonna carry on that theme today. We're gonna carry on this whole concept of I think the way the world is uh, the way the world is at the moment, I don't know. It's going that way. It's this whole like what's the bare minimum I need to do to achieve X? Do you know what's like they going if you're going into something that attitude of like, oh, so what's the bare minimum I need to do to gain muscle? Well, why don't you do as much as you possibly can? And then if you fall short of that, then, then ask the question. you're all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, I just find it odd. Like, I just find that odd concept. And, and I guess it's human nature, probably, to kind of find the easiest route or the easiest course of action. Well, yeah, I think it's, I think it's probably hardwired into us, isn't it? Like, as a survival kind of mechanism to, yeah. you know, to go the, the quickest, most direct route rather than the long way around. I think that's what it is. It's survival. Yeah, of course it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Energy conservation, that kind yeah. of Yeah, why would you want something stress, you know, yeah. longer term when you could just have the shortcut now and and look, it's the sexier way to go about things. Obviously, you know, doing the bare minimum is 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 better than saying, Oh, you know, you've got to put a shit ton of effort in or you know, it, yeah. and again it's all quick results and this and that and the other, and it's always like, you know, you get that, you kind of go, it's the same as when people go, How quick can I do that? or how long do those results take? Well, immediately i know that you're a dickhead like when yeah. when somebody messages me that like I, and i get a bit of a fucking it's a bit of a bugbear when i post a transformation and someone goes how, how long did it take yeah why does that matter what's yeah. that got to do with anything how long it yeah. takes it doesn't matter because you're i don't know whether someone thinks that there's like a standard 12 week transformation or something like that and that okay so that's what 12 weeks looks looks like so if i'm going to do coaching then for 12 weeks that's the result i'll get yeah whereas there is no standard because everybody's different. You're all starting from, from a different standpoint. If somebody gets in shape in 12 weeks, it's because they were only 12 weeks out of shape. If somebody yeah. takes 20 weeks, it's because they were 20 weeks out of shape. That's the way it works. There is no standard. So, so it's irrelevant how long it takes. That's like going, oh, you've saved up 20 grand in your bank. How long did that take? You know, you know, is that something I can learn? And you're going, yeah, well, I earn 10 grand a month. So it only took me, you know, three months, four months. And I, oh, God, I only earned two grand a month. So you're yeah. starting from a different start point. You're starting from a different start point. So what, I don't understand what relevance. It's, it, also, it's also that thing of, like, you know, that people, all they want is the end picture. Yeah. 
and not the habits and everything else that comes with it. Because I think a lot of our clients, once they start coaching, they realise actually that they feel better and they change their life because of the habits that are instilled to get to that point. And actually the picture's almost a byproduct. Yeah. The picture's a byproduct that they can then live with to a, to a, to a, to a certain degree, live with that picture. Yeah. Obviously photo shoot and stuff, you can't stay that, you know, year round, but it's that whole thing of people assume that it's like, how long did it take? As if like, that they're then going to be able to stay there as yeah. well. And like, that's it forever then. Yeah. Well, no, because people who do those know that, well, they can't stay in that condition year round and that actually what they want is the habits, the ability to stick to their training consistently, all that sort of stuff for life that enables them to stay somewhat close to that yeah. as well. And that's what straight away I know when people, they, all they want and all they care about then is that picture. It's and they a, just want before and after. I'm like, yeah, don't it, worry about it. It's a chicken and egg type scenario. It's like you think that you want the result, but what you actually need is the process. And unfortunately, people fixate so much on the result that, it, it, that when you do start coaching them, it bleeds in to their kind of weekly vocabulary yeah. where they'll, they'll focus on how much has changed or not changed or scale weight or waist measurement or pictures don't look different. And yeah. they focus so much on the process, whereas they would be better reframing um, their kind of mindset to just focusing on the process rather than, rather than the results. That, yeah. and, and if they do that, then like you say, the result is the byproduct. You're paying somebody for the process, essentially. As a, as a coach, people are paying us for the process. And if you trust that coach, all you need to do as the client is follow the process and the result comes. So it's a chicken and egg and people think that, it's like you say, it's almost like you get the result and then it just stays. Where it's like, no, I would rather teach you the method and the result will come when it comes, but at least you can then keep it because you've nailed the process. And throughout the whole process as well, the thing that I find funny is that there are weeks where with our clients, we do ask them to do the bare minimum. Like this isn't a dig at people who, you know, I'm not saying grind harder every single week, but it, again, it's the attitude. And the amount of times when a client does the bare minimum in a week and they're like, oh, I've not had a great week. I'm like, no, that's fine. Like you've done enough. Like yeah. you've done enough to keep going forwards and keep doing it. Yes, if we stayed here the whole time, you wouldn't see the progress you want. You wouldn't see the result you want and all that sort of stuff. But it's that whole thing of, that they assume as well that then you, you're going to have that every single week. So like when people say, oh, what's the bare I need to do to do this? It tells me that you're only prepared to do that. Yeah. So then, well, you're going to have weeks where you're going to fall short. Yeah. And then that's not the bare minimum. Yeah. Because I know clients that will do anything to get results. Yeah. And some weeks they can only do the bare minimum. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, as long as I know we're in that ballpark, we're in that sort of, that yeah. zone of, well, you're prepared to do the max, we need to do the minimum. Yeah. All, we, all I ask my clients is that you're in that zone consistently. That's it. It's the fact of aiming for the bare minimum. Yeah. Like that's you, your You can't do that every standard. week. Yeah, you can't get there every week. You yeah. can't hit top so you, every week. So you'll be falling below the bare minimum. Yeah. yeah. Which is not a good look. <laughs> no, it's not. It's no, not a good trust look. Trust us, we know. I, and do you know what? It's one of those things where people want to do the bare minimum, but want the best results. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mad, isn't it? You get to an update and it's like, okay, cool. So, you know, we stuck to things maybe 40% of the time this week. And uh, yeah, you didn't get all your sessions in. You did two. Uh, and actually, you missed your cardio and on three days, you didn't do your steps. And you're complaining that you haven't lost any weight this week. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you, haven't, you haven't done anything. Yeah. Like, you, you haven't done it, have you? So why are you there for complaining? Yeah. It's like, if you set your standards to go, what's the most I can do? And then, yes, you're falling short. It's like the old thing, isn't it? Aim for the moon and fall amongst the stars. Yeah. You're, not, you're, not aiming, you're, you're aiming so low and still not doing that, but then ex yeah. your expectations are fucking ridiculous. It's like, it's, like going, it's like being at school and being like, oh, what's the bare minimum I need to, I need to study to get a C? And then going, yeah. oh, I didn't get an A star. Yeah. It's like, it well, is. yeah, but you, you weren't aiming for that. Like, yeah. unbelievable. It's, yeah, exactly. It's like going, right, you need 60% for a C yeah. and you need 90% for an A, but you've only answered 60% of the questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you try to get them all right. Yeah. 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 That's exactly it. Yeah, that but, is it in a nutshell. And it's that's the thing. I think it's it's. And then you've got some people who, who in using that analogy again, they want to do the test and they want to get every single question right, hundred percent. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it at all. Yeah. And they're they're the ones you're like, well, no, you you could have done really well. Like you yeah. could have still got a B or whatever and yeah. done really good things. Exactly. And like they're the th that's that's the spectrum we're talking about here is that you've got people who do all or nothing and coaching is that exact middle ground. Oh yeah. And it's just like I said, it's, it's aiming for that. Remember how, like, I suppose you get, I can't remember what it's like, it's got A levels in it and things like that. You needed between X amount of grades between A and C. It was never like you need them all A or it was always like, yeah, yeah. So you it, was five, it was five between, A's to C's. Yeah, between a certain, and that's exactly it. It's like all we need is people to be within an A to C. Yeah. Pretty much five weeks out of six, like you're all good. The problem is, is that people do 100% or 0%. So it'll flick between 100 to 0, 100 to 0. Whereas, like you say, if you can go between 60 and 80% and just maintain that, it's much better. 
much easier, and it's good enough. Six, 60, 80, 90%, whatever. I get it with clients, don't we? We get it with them. Oh, I couldn't, um, I couldn't track dinner, so I just didn't track the whole day. Yeah. Well, yeah. Track breakfast and lunch, though. Yeah. Still track those. Like, at least we know I can help you with that. And we're like, look, dinner's going to be around, what, 1,500 calories? Like, this. still track that around 600 calories, breakfast yeah. and lunch. Probably be right. No, I couldn't. No. Wouldn't. We well, couldn't or wouldn't. Yeah. What's the... Wouldn't. I mean, it's that whole thing of wouldn't. wouldn't. And it, I hate... We've talked about this before about the... Oh, it's untrackable. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. You can guess. But it, again, it's that mindset that creeps in. What's the bare minimum? What can I get away with? What's yeah. the other one? What can I get away with? Yeah. What can I get away with and still get good results? Yeah. Why are you trying to get away with anything? Yeah. Why are you trying to cheat yourself out of this? Like somehow like your body's not going to know. Yeah. In some way. Well, I got away with it this week. We didn't get away with it. It still happened. Yeah. You just didn't get any weight on the scales. Yeah. So you didn't get away with it. Yeah. I just don't understand that. You can't get you can't get away with any, like you can't get away with anything. For me, that my biggest thing is just the the results based thing. It's the comparison of their results to other people's results with no context of what yeah. anybody's doing. It's like you're fifty percent consistent, like across a month. You barely train, and yet you're comparing your results to what other clients are doing or. Um, other people on Instagram or whatever, or or other people in the gym, you don't look like that because you're not putting the effort in that's required. Yeah. If you change, and again, this is where we spoke about the bodybuilders. This is where the, the the bodybuilders have it right. Bodybuilders aren't in shape because of what specifics they're eating or what supplements they're taking. You know, unless we're talking about extracurricular supplements. But they're not in shape for that. They're in shape because they are ridiculously consistent. All the time. Yeah. Like, they do train five times a week, and they do not miss sessions. They don't miss their meals, which by as a byproduct means that they don't miss their macros. They're not having bottomless brunches every weekend. Mm. They're not going drinking and going... Trying yeah, well, to get away with it. Yeah, well, I've cut down from four days a week drinking to two. Okay, right, okay. But, but, but it's still not good enough, like, if you want those top-tier results. And, and it is, it, it's kind of the... For me, it's like the, the comparisons... And I have to explain to some of my clients, it's like, okay, you're training like twice per week. Can you train just one more time? One more time. Yeah. And what you've done is you've increased by 50%. You've increased from two, an extra one, to 50%, which means that your results will come quicker. You're going, so you will do the same amount of sessions in nine months if you're training three times as you would do in a year. So you're speeding up the process. Yeah. And then you go, okay, well, can we do four sessions as opposed to the two? Because you're now going, okay, you're going to train the same amount of times in six months as you will a year. So it's that kind of thought process where you go, okay, well, that's a little bit more um, tangible. That's a little bit more realistic. Whereas you're then thinking about those people who are happy coasting, skipping sessions. I mean, I, I had, uh, you know, I I saw, um, I did a, uh, an update this morning and somebody is is trained, I think, twice in the last month. It's like, you know, pointless. Yeah, po- you know, po- you know. It's like pointless. It's it's that whole thing as well of like, we, I think bodybuilders, they, you know, it's it's funny and and like what they do and, and like we sort of slag them off and a little bit and you know the the processes that they do, the processes that they go through, are some of them are necessary. But all the results that we get with people who do photo shoots and go to that level and those those transformations that are really sort of wow is that they have the same level of effort and application as those bodybuilders do. To a, to a degree. Yeah. But it's the processes that make it more enjoyable. Yeah. And that they are allowed to, you know, they are allowed to go to a party and not have to take their own Tupperware and they are allowed to do all those sorts of things. But they still have the same level of effort and thought process involved every other meal and every other day around that social event. Yeah. It's just that there's a little bit more of a, I suppose, a scientific approach, a little bit more of a intelligent approach to it because yeah. you can do it because, you, you know, you can get to that point. But that's the thing is that people need to remember is that they need to take some inspiration from bodybuilders and the amount of effort that they give yeah. And the consistency that they show, because they're the two traits that if you combine that with a more flexible diet and an understanding that you can eat out socially and you can still have a couple of drinks and still make progress, there's a difference there between doing that and going, yeah, but oh, Dan and Mike's like, I have a couple of drinks and fit it in my macros and it's okay. Mm, yeah, not every day though. Yeah. Yeah, but don't, don't do that every day. Just because we said you can doesn't mean that you should. Yeah. And it's that whole thing of can and should and, again, the bare minimum and, like, oh, what can I get away with? It's that attitude is not going to get you anywhere. It's like knowing you've got an inch and taking a mile, for sure. It's like, uh, again, it's just extremes. It's just like when people go, you can do this and, you know, and, and almost it's not going to really matter. It's like you say, you can have a couple of drinks, you know, once every two, three, four weeks, whatever. You can have a couple of drinks, and in the grand scheme, it's not really going to Special affect occasion, you. Special occasion, yeah. Yeah, it's not really going to affect your results, but it, it then changes to, 
oh, well, if I can do that, then I can do more of it. He's, yeah. he's like, OK, oh, so he's taught me how to fit alcohol in, so I'll just do it all the time then. It's that whole thing of like, oh, I say to people, I say, oh, you know, if it's, oh, it's the wedding anniversary, so me and Mrs are going to have a couple of drinks. Cool. OK, cool, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's my, um, it's my niece's pet's brother's um, yeah. christening. So I had three beers. Yeah. Well, no. You didn't, you didn't that's need... not a reason to celebrate, is it? That's you know, like, just taking a piss. Like, who was it? And, and it's, it's not a witch hunt. Um, I think it was, it was an update last week, and it was something like... In fact, was it... No, it, it was one of Amna's clients, actually. And I don't know how much... They, I don't think they're going to listen to this. I don't th I'm not going to name them anyway, it doesn't matter. OK. OK, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. It was like, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for breakfast. Uh, here's three options. There's poached eggs on toast. Yeah. There was, let's just say pancakes, and there was something called the, the big breakfast. And she... she eggs on toast. She said, I think I'm thinking the big breakfast. So I'm going to reply with, well, obviously not. Like, you're looking at 1,000, 1,000, yeah. 300, 400 for that. What about the eggs on toast? OK, but I'm probably going to have some bacon with it. Like, and it's like, why? Just, like, yeah. why? Like, why? Yeah. Why are you probably going to have some bacon with it? What difference is that going to make to your enjoyment of that meal? Mm. Like, yes, it's nice to have a bit of bacon, but it's also nice to move in the direction that you want. Like, again, mm. I, there was a client, but I can't remember, and he said something like, yeah, it's probably going to be a couple of beers. <sighs> why? Like, mm. why? What about... Getting the job done now, not aiming for the bare minimum, and then when you're in fucking shape, then aim for the bare minimum because that's what keeps you in shape. People are so obsessed with the here and now, though. They are so, like, if the beer's on offer now, it's kind of like they can't imagine in a year's time that they're going to be offered a beer again. Yeah. It's that whole thing of, like, well, Mike's going to be the last beer I ever have. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's about they, they can't foresee it and go, it's like, what is it the other day? I had a client. I think it was um, Super Bowl's coming up, innit? Yeah. Super Bowl? Yeah. Um, oh, we, have, we always have a big Super Bowl party. Yeah. Okay, cool. You're trying, to, trying to lose weight, so yeah. what do you want to achieve with that? Like, it's the Super Bowl, it's on the TV or whatever. Is you eating and drinking going to change the experience yeah. of watching that game on TV, for example? Yeah. Is it going to make a big difference? Yeah. Or shall we? how about we forego this year so that we get you in shape so that every year from now you never have to worry about it again? Yeah. It's mad, though. But they can't see that. It's like... It's well, always the we always, we always, or yeah. I always. Yeah, but... But we always, and I always, you're, you're overweight. Led you here, yeah. And it's that, but it's that thing of, if it's not the Super Bowl, though, it's then oh, it's Six Nations. That's on at the moment. Yeah. Rugby. Six yeah. Nations. Yeah. Then it'll be... Football. Football, FA Cup final. Yeah. Then it'll be cricket. World Cup. Then it'll be whatever. And then it's, it's like, I don't mind celebrating special occasions and, like, and, and traditions and stuff, but it's when they become weekly. I'm yeah. like, no, this isn't tradition. This is just you it's fucking just up your, your diet. Yeah. This is your problem. The, th the thing is, is that people go, there's always something. There's always something. No, there's always something because you're choosing that there's always something. There isn't always something. There isn't. Mm -hmm. Like, there'll be your birthday, Mrs. Birthday, Christmas, let's say, New Year. And then, and then what else is there? Like, what else is there? Oh, it's my dad's birthday. Okay, it's your dad's birthday. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to change. If you're going out for me or for we all, we, all, we always go and get smashed on that. Yeah. That's it's like, if you're going out for your dad's birthday, you can still go and pick the chicken dish, the sea bass dish, dish fish dish, whatever. Yeah. Like, you don't have to go in and get the mixed grill. Mm. Like, you can still make sensible decisions. It's almost like people are always going, there's always something there, isn't there? And I just don't get it. It's like, no, there isn't. It's the, it's the attitude again, though. It's the attitude to it, isn't it? It's, it's they, they can't see past it. There's they always can't... something if you want to do something. There's always something for us to do. And at the minute, there is something for us to do. The weekend, you go, you might have a couple of drinks, you might have a meal out, you might have breakfast, because we're not dieting. Mm. I tell you when those some things end up drying up is when you are dieting. The last time that I dieted, for six months, I had no alcohol. I drink alcohol regularly, mm. but for those six months, because I had something to achieve, I wasn't drinking, yeah. I wasn't, there wasn't something every week, coincidentally, it didn't mean that I didn't have the opportunity to go see friends and family and do this or that and the other, it's just that I chose myself over that. Mm. Yeah. It's mad. Bare minimum though, isn't it? Bare minimum, like, it's... Just, I, just don't, I just don't understand as a concept of life, like, it's just, what's the bare minimum? I get it when you're a kid and, you know, school maybe and all that sort of stuff, but as an adult, you just know that the effort is rewarded. Yeah. Like, in, in pretty much everything that... It just does, it seems to be with diet. People just go, ah, oh, I can't bother. Oh, I had a busy week, though, so... It's just, you know... I just don't... I don't get it. I just don't... Yeah, maybe that's... 
It's across the board, though. Even with even with coaches, like we just filmed the uh, film content a, for a week. I've got no clients. Well, yeah, what a, in, in that mad. Yeah, one week is it? Five posts. Good work. In that mad, you talk to people, and it's like, yeah. oh yeah, being yeah consistent. Yeah, well, you were expecting people to sign up now. Like what? Yeah. Like this this week because you've gone, done a couple of posts or you've spoke to a couple of people in DMs. Fucking hell! I wish it was that easy. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? We can bottle that up and be millionaires. <laughs> like. The fuck me! It's consistency over time. It's just shortcuts, and and we we did a little video about this for Instagram this morning about this four hour work week and things like that. And it's stemming from business coaches, I think. Like I think it's stemming from business coaches and having having to leverage more time. And look, that's at the top end of a business. At the top end of a bit of a business, you then start to delegate work when you have employees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You take more time out from doing the, I guess, the actual job, and you you learn how to run a business. You you learn how to be a manager, and therefore you get a bit more time back, and so on and so forth. But you're talking about businesses. The way that people talk about their fitness business these days is like they're running a multi-million pound company. You're not. You're yourself doing mm. fucking spreadsheets or meal plans or whatever it is that you're doing. You don't run a business. As much as you want to say mm. you're the CEO of your own business, well done, or you're a business owner or you've got a fitness business, again, well done. Like, this kind of, I'm going to stop doing as much because of, because of X, Y, and Z, that's not how to leverage time for business. Like, when you get up to a certain point, when you've put in the work, like your physique, when you put in the work, when you've dedicated the hours, then you can start to take more time away from the business because you've dedicated the hours. You've got the results that back you up. You've got the experience. You've got more clients. You can charge a higher price. You can then work with less people. You then get more hours. But people are skipping that. People, coaches are skipping that. Just the same as people do with their physique. It's like, no, I want that now. So I'm going to give a shit service now and, and not be present at all for people and charge a higher price. And they wonder why why after three, four months, they're struggling. They're having big, big drop-offs in clients. It's because of this whole nature of what's the minimum I can do for the maximum return. And they're the, and they're the same coaches that say to their clients, oh, don't fall for the, the quick fixes. Yeah. They always do videos about, oh, you can't get results in one week. Like, they're yeah. the same people. Yeah. That post about that all the time, and they can't see they can't see the same thing in themselves when it yeah. comes to their own business. It's just yeah. like it's just hilarious. And I think everything that we've done, we always we all whenever we have a chat about a new thing or we have a chat about this, we're just like right, we've got to do this consistently now for X number of time. We've got to make sure that because we know it's not going to come off. You know that it's going to take a bit of time to get to where you want it to. And um, I think people genuinely be we, again. We don't really talk about it much or, or like post much about it. Just they just wouldn't. I don't think they quite understand the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, they you know they just see the best bits. Yeah, of course. You see the highlights because that's what you post. But and you um, only want to see the best bits as well. You only ever want to see the best bits of someone else's life. You only ever want to compare yourself to the best bits. Yeah. Why don't I look like that? Why ain't my business like that? Well, because, because you're trying to do the bare minimum. Yeah. All the time. But yeah, it just came up in conversation, didn't it? This week, a client. I was just like, yeah, that's the that's the attitude. That's what we want to hear. In it, like you know. So th there's going to be people listening to this that I know um, will be doing the bare minimum. Like they, they will be. They'll be going. What can I get away with? Can I have drinks? Can I have snacks? Can I fit this in? Can I fit that in? And it's just a bastardized version of getting results. Trying, like chanting your arm. Can I do this? Can I do that? Why don't you just get on with it? Like yeah. just, 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 just get on with it. Just like when was well, the last time you did the most amount possible? Yeah, imagine. Imagine switching your mindset to what? What's the most I can do? Like, what's the most I can do? Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy thing. You give somebody like a deadline or a target, and and, and people people speed up. Like, it's it, it's mad. If you had a like, we've said this before about posting content and stuff. If someone was going to give you a million pounds to do it. I bet you would do the most amount possible then. If someone said, right, you've got four weeks to lose a stone. I bet you'd be training four or five times. I bet you'd hit your steps every day and I bet you'd be consistent with your nutrition and you'd stop alcohol. I bet you would mm -hmm. for a million pounds. So then is it the fact that you can't do it or just that your want's not high enough because you're not getting the million pounds? Your want's not high enough. So you're making poor decisions. There you go. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So on that bombshell, we'll move over to, uh, to the funny story because I'll tell, tell you who does the bare minimum, the Sunday Sport um, Research Department. They do the bare minimum. We know this. Um, but this story is unbelievable. By the way, if if we get if I get another dog, it's going to be annoying doing this podcast. You're going to get another dog, mate. I think you need to you need to be at peace with that. It's going to be very annoying, though. Yeah. She's annoying enough. It will be, but they'll be fine. I'll just have to do it at my house. 
You've got two dogs, though. Yeah, but they're better behaved than... I say better behaved, they're not. We can just lock ourselves in my office. Do they not whine? No. Oh, see, so she whines because she's too needy. So if Laura was in, she'd, they'd be all right. They'd just be all right with Laura. Yeah, if, if Hamlet was outside, she'd it's be sat outside with Hamlet. Anyway, um, here's, the, uh, here's the title. I'm going to try and read the title without laughing. All right. See if it makes me laugh. Jeremy Corbyn, sex dwarf, eaten by otters. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't happen. Right. There's a, it says here, look. Right, Rage. Ted, seen here on EDL March, was eaten by otters after drowning. EDL March. Right. Now, I'm just going to show you this, right? I think this picture of him is photoshopped. Well, it's 100% photoshopped. <laughs> that, so that's Jamie Corbyn's face. That is Jamie Corbyn's face, isn't it? They've zoomed in on a picture of this dwarf at an EDL March. It's got two dogs with him. The dogs are about as big as him. He's on the EDR march. He's got a little earring in his left ear. It looks like a long, like slightly long dangly earring. No, a big ring, sorry. And it looks photoshopped, like they've just put Jeremy Corbyn's face on again. his body. I mean, if that isn't Jeremy Corbyn and that is this guy, that's a dead ringer. Well, it's a dead ringer. But I mean, that's just the thing. So look, Jeremy Corbyn's sex dwarf... Eaten by otters. There's look, obviously more to this story. No, there is, no there's more to the story in too much. Because there's too much in the headline. There's too much. So which is it? Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn. Oh. Why sex dwarf? Like, eaten by otters. Again, a weird thing to be eaten by. There's just too oh, much going oh, on. Oh. It's not like normal guy eaten by otters. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Hey, don't question it. Come on, mate. This is probably true. Don't question it. Okay. Right. A dwarf who was the spitting image of Labour yes. boss Jeremy Corbyn was partially eaten by otters after capsizing his tiny canoe and drowning. Partially eaten by otters. Yeah, yeah. You said eaten at the start. Yeah. Was, mm. T- Titchy Ted Foster, okay. a member of the anti-immigrant English Defence League, oh, saw guy. red when pals joked about his resemblance to lefty 70s throwback Corbyn. Okay, right. If you're a dwarf, and look, I don't know if looking like Jeremy Corbyn is the biggest issue. Like again, I don't, no, I, I don't know. I don't know the struggles of a daily life of a smaller person. I don't know, mm. but I'm assuming that having a slight resemblance to Jeremy Corbyn, which he's not a bad-looking guy, like it's, it's not like you're saying he looks like you. you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's Jeremy Corbyn. He's just a yeah. normal-looking guy, I'd say. Yeah. Anyway, and when he was nicknamed Jeremy Smallbin, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, good. Good banter. <laughs> yeah. oh. That's, that's tickled me, that is. Jeremy Smallbin, at a rally last week, sulking Ted took to the River Seven near his home in Tewkesbury, Gloucestershire, to calm down near me, that is. Okay, listen. It's as recent as last week that he's been called <laughs> this on the march, and he's gone out canoeing as a way to vent. Would this happen? The keen kayaker, the first dwarf to paddle around Britain in 2003, oh, was found dead close... To his upturned craft eight miles upstream of Gloucester. Wild otters had gnawed at his body. It was at first feared, it was first feared that Ted was the victim of foul play as he was sexually involved with several married women and was a keen dogger. What? There's a lot going on here. What is going on? <laughs> Ted Lee, he's I tell you what, Titchy Ted, he's got a fucking fan. Well, I suppose you could say a busy, busy life. Yeah. Um, Not half, he's got lots going on. How's he managing it? But experts ruled his death was by drowning and accidental. Pal Ken Harris said, like many dwarfs, Ted was an angry man. Can you say that? Can you say all dwarfs are angry? Like many dwarfs. How many does he know? Yeah, how many does he know? Ted was an angry man. Angry? So you can imagine how cross he got when people started calling him Jeremy Smallbin. He took his right-wing politics seriously and the idea of being compared to a Marxist made him rage. Oh, so it was the oh, fact that he was the Labour leader. Okay. Right. Oh, wow. right. So okay. that's the thing. That makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he loved to relax in a canoe, but it seems he capsized. His tiny corpse must have been a big snack for artists. Nice. <laughs> Little play. Yeah. Little play. And that's the article. I mean... <sighs> it didn't happen, did it? Why do you say that, mate? But I, you can't... Look, let, I, I think... I think what could have happened here is that the guy enjoys canoeing and he's drowned. Mm. That's what's happened. That's what's happened. I, I believe that if he's the first dwarf to row around Britain, OK, well done. 
you know, you've you've rode around Britain, well done, mm-hmm. you know, better than just being in pantomimes at Christmas, I guess. Yeah. I don't think, like, half of that headline is needed. So what's this sex dwarf? What? How, and how... Because he likes, because he was, he was seeing with married women and oh, likes dogging. He, who says? Like, well... Where's that information come from? Just saying. Well, and why is it relevant to the story? The story's focus is about someone being eaten by otters. So why does it matter if he's a dogger or oh, not? Oh, it matters, boy. I don't get dogging either. Like, I just don't understand Seems what's a bit odd, going on. Um, should we go into another one? We've got a bit of time. Should we go, go another on. one? Okay, this is the other one that I was going to... Uh, this is the other one I was, I was considering. Brucey bonus. Yeah. For my birthday, is it? Yeah. Okay. Sex with Greg's pasty boiled my bell end. Brilliant. <laughs> which, which pasty? Now Howard fumes, I'm going to sue. Well, I don't think it's Greg's fault. Not going to get very far with that, are you, mate? Yeah, I don't think it's Greg's fault because, you know, if you were if you were eating that pasty, you'd complain if it's cold. Well, so exactly, yeah. Not meant for shagging, let's be honest. There can be no finer a treat than tucking into a piping hot Greg's chicken baked pasty in one of the Britain's in one of Britain's peeling and windswept town centres. It's a bit of a mouthful. It's like they're trying to really convey. They use a lot like, of adjectives, don't they? Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's not Wuthering Heights, mate. Peeling like, and windswept. Just saying, town centres. Yeah, town centres. But oddball Howard Russell took his admiration for the flaky pastry snack to an extreme, and some would say warped new level. Do you know what this is like? It's like they've had a word limit. You know, when you're at school, you had a word limit, and you try to like pad it out. Yeah, it's like they do that. Yeah, you they've just got the, they've got going. a story, and they've gone. So this guy, there's not much. Story this guy to. built his bell end in a pasty. Okay, how can I flesh this out? Yeah, there, there isn't much story. He, no. They're trying to make it fill the, the columns. Yeah. The 32-year-old sales manager developed a sexual fetish for having sex with piping hot pasties. Okay. Alas, unwed Howard came to a sticky end, oh. a sticky and terribly blistered bellend. Oh. Last Saturday, after stocking up with chicken bakes, he scuttled back to his terrace house. Scuttled <laughs> <laughs> scuttled back. You can imagine the way he's walking. <laughs> About like a lava on, like yeah. can't get seen. Really low to the floor. To his terraced home in Northwich, Cheshire, for an afternoon of bakery-based fornication. But okay. finding that his pur- purchases had cooled, cooled. Yeah. On the walk home, Howard blasted one microwave. of the bakes in the microwave. So it's not Greg's fault at all, then. No, idiot. It's not Greg's fault at all. Before slipping his erect member into its creamy white sauce interior. I don't need all that, do they? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. That's, good, uh, that's bad, that. No, it's good. It's, it was then that he realised far, far too late that the microwaving process had raised the temperature of the sauce Blow to something like that of Icelandic lava? Why? What? Why Icelandic lava? Just lava. What? Yeah. Is there a difference? And it's just that, right? That whole paragraph could have been it was then he realised that it was too hot. Yeah. But no, they made it 40 words. Do you know what I do like, before sticking my dick in it? Check it, it's too hot. Check it, yeah. <laughs> blow on it. I, no, he didn't have time, mate. He was, a bit too, hot. he was too excited. I'd blow on it before he ate it. Never would. mind stick my dick in it. Of course it. you would. Nursing his scalded schlong, last night Howard whimpered, last night? Last night? How quick did he go the story? I have been into Greg's many, many times and never have I seen a warning sign for you not to put your penis into one of their products. It's again going back to old <laughs> old podcasts. You have to say what not to do with everything. Yeah. It's like you mustn't wank at work. Remember that. That to me is a clear case of negligence and it I is. tend to sue. To be fair, I have never been in the Greggs where they've told you not to shag the pasties. So how no. do you know not to? I know. I made a phone call to one of those solicitors who advertise on the telly, but unfortunately the person on the other end of the phone had some sort of coughing fit when I explained my predicament. I don't think they were coughing, they were no, laughing. they were laughing, mate. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's that's my... I mean, look at Howard, if I look at a picture of Howard. He looks like someone who would oh, have sex with a pasty. Yeah, he does, actually, doesn't he? Yeah. He's got, like, the, the wet look jelly in, well, and it's just combed down the on his head. It's the fluorescent stuff. The, the ones yeah. that you used to get like pink or blue yeah. or whatever, and you would just take a dollop and put it on ice to it. Yeah. Comb it down or curtains. And he straightened it down on here. I ran my helmet under cold water straight away, but I'm still in agony and can barely walk. It's covered in blisters. I may never be able to have sex with a pasty again. Well, that is all you'd be having sex with, to be fair. So that's your biggest issue. I might never be able to have sex with a pasty again. Good. That's a good thing, isn't it? (laughs) Surely. You shouldn't be having sex with pasties. Nah. Last night we approached Greg's store in Northwich um, shopping area to get the company's response, but the shop had already closed for the evening. Wow. And what what are they going to say? Anyway, I'm not going to say anything like that. Yeah, what are they going to say? Well, what's his fault, surely, isn't it? Unbelievable. 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 <laughs> Mental. It's little face. Isn't it? Little face. Uh, so there you go. There you go, guys. Yeah. In more stories that never happened in a million years. But uh, somehow in newspapers. Yeah. There you go. I had a story this week, didn't I, with my fucking socks that you bought me. 
I mean, that was brilliant. Like, not disgusting, but you, just you care far too much what people think. That's your well, problem. Well, you know, you know, you don't like to be, you don't like to be the butt of the jokes, do you? So I don't know whether anybody knows, but Dan insists on wearing these hideous socks. Tie dye socks, like, they are. Tie dye, colourful, colourful tie dye socks, and they're but, and they're amazing. But so. they're like they're they're abstract colours. They're pinks and purples and blues and Greens swirly and, stuff. Yeah, really. yellows. Yeah. And anyway, Dan got me some. It was a bit of a semi joke for my birthday. Did buy me a lovely pair of golf trainers, shoes, whatever. And then, but but also as a backup gift, kind of brought the next day. Yeah. He uh, he brought me the socks because he knows how much I don't like them when he wears them. So yeah. he's put them on. Anyway, and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to meet Dan today. I'll put the socks on for him. So I put the socks on for him. Just for me, apparently. Uh, yeah. And you're thinking, do you know what? When they're on, I thought, do you know what? Eh, they're not as bad as what I thought. You know, I mm. thought I could get used to these. Yeah. You know, look to the mirror, not too bad. Anyway, I go and to the, the, And then you have sex with them. Yeah, then I have sex with them, <laughs> and that's it. And I'll never be able to have so sex with normal socks again. Um, no, and so I went to the garage, and I go there most days, yeah. and there's just the, you know, the, the couple of girls behind the, the, the till, and they were just, like, kind of giggling amongst themselves. And I thought, I've got something on my fucking face here, or what? And then, there is that, yeah. And then, as I left, and obviously my feet were then visible again, Back, back in plain sight, because obviously I was at the counter, it was waist high or whatever. They then keep laughing more and then shout as I'm walking out the door, nice socks. They are nice socks, they oh. meant it. Well, they, and they meant it, probably. They were laughing. Oh, they were laughing at yeah, me. Yeah, they're smiling, you know. Yeah, they're, they're, smiling. they're fighting over yeah, they're, they're, smiling. <laughs> they're smiling. They're smiling. And did you hear a little bit about the car set up as well? Yeah, your phone, phone Fuck. name. In it, that's embarrassing as well. Oh, yeah, but that's self-inflicted. That self-inflicted. Yeah, but do you know when you start? Like, oh God, you knew, I knew it was coming. Yeah, it's just, just I'd have insisted. I'd have been like, nah, it doesn't nah. work. It doesn't work. Enough. Well, whose phone's this? There's, there's only two of us in the in the building. It's probably yours. <laughs> no, it's not right. No, it's not mine. Yeah, <laughs> who's that is? Yeah. So if you, if you didn't know, I went and picked up a I went and picked up a, a car, and um, she was showing me around the showroom, and um, yeah. Mm. showed me the car and whatnot and giving you all the basic instruction here's, here's the wheels oh, cheers <laughs> yeah. you know here's how to open the door yeah, alright thank key. you yeah. yes here's how to sit in you know teaching me to suck eggs probably like I've never been in a car they should start probably based on your socks you probably thought you'd probably, done them before. it wasn't I didn't have the socks on <laughs> oh, okay. but um, but yeah so um, if I had the socks on I'd be turned away at the door mate True. But, but yeah so so anyway she starts setting up the car kind of thing the car play stuff and she, you know she kind of showed me all the handy stuff on the console. I was like, oh, you know, that's interesting. You know, she's like, oh, I can set up, you know, your phone on the Bluetooth and that. Now I know that my phone name is has got a slightly humorous, or what I think is a slightly humorous name, <laughs> um, and I've always had it. I've always called my phone something, um, and it might be a, 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 a kind of an abstraction of, of the same thing, or it might might tweak over time with different phones. Mm. And I knew that if she searched my phone on Bluetooth, that the name would come up on screen. So I was like, nah, you're all right. Nah. And she's like, ah, go on. You know, I'll set it up for you. And it, it's then where you kind of, I'm in that 50-50 that way of going, nah. Yeah, but it's not something you can protest over that much because it's yeah. not weird. Yeah. It's not that weird. Yeah. That's what I mean. Because then she'd be I like, didn't, I didn't want to be, screen. yeah, exactly. I didn't want to be like, well, no, I'll do, do it myself. I didn't want to be a knob. So I was like, oh, okay then. So I knew what was coming. <laughs> I knew what was coming with the name on the screen. So I put my Bluetooth on. <laughs> and she just looked at me and went, is that you? I went, yeah. Prince Miguel dos phones of the second. <laughs> I went, yeah. I was like, just a, I was like, it's a funny name, really. <laughs> like, dead, dead embarrassed. I just thought, oh, fucking hell. There's, me, there's me a meek iPhone. I think I'm fucking, yeah. yeah. I, I've always called it something different over the years. Like... Prince, Prince Miguel, Miguel Dos phones with the second. second. Yeah, it's my phone's name. Got to change it now. I can't. <laughs> I like it. Well, there you go. There you At least go. I've done the bare minimum and just got meek iPhone on it. Exactly. You know? there, there you go. I the bare minimum. I need to put a bit more effort in. I yeah. Uh, well, there you go. If you enjoyed that, like, share, subscribe, post it on your wall, put it on your MySpace. Oh, we fucking forgot about that put again. It on, didn't put we? It on Bebo. Yeah, Bebo, oh, all of that. Jazz. Like what, jazz is. Yeah. TikTok, that's where the kids are at nowadays. I think so, TikTok. We'll never be able to do that. Talk tick, TikTok, talk tick. Can't dance. It's so. the biggest um, growing one. Isn't do you know what I saw, actually, the other day? It was really interesting. And I, uh, it was a bit conspiracy theorist, but I found it quite fascinating. 
Um, finish on this one. About TikTok. The Earth is flat, is it? No, it's about TikTok. I can't remember the fuck I saw it now. It's going to really annoy me. But basically, it was a bunch of Americans saying how TikTok's a Chinese app, right? Okay. Well, and apparently, I don't know how true this is, but in China, China. the TikTok, the, more, the most common TikToks China. are people showing off their like engineering skills and people showing off their ability to make things and create things. China. And it was like talking about how in China it's used for that. Useful stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. In England useful. it's dancing. And how, yeah. yeah, and how in America it's dancing and it's stupid shit and yeah. it's basically taking people's attention away from being good. And they were basically saying that there was a theory whereby that the algorithm in the US is designed to show people more of the dancing and more of the shit, stupid shit. And in China, they show more of the engineering stuff. And they were saying how, like, Their again, really smart. conspiracy theory shit here. Like, the modern warfare now isn't fucking firing missiles and shit. It's making their nation dumb. Yeah. And I was sat there going, fucking right, you know. The Americans don't need that, though. They don't need it, no, you're right. They're already dumb. But it does make you, it does make you think, though, that, like, again, with algorithms and all this sort of stuff, that obviously we know with Facebook and obviously when it was the political stuff and how it was, like, you can swing things based on what people view and all this sort of shit. It did make interesting... I, I have no idea what people show in China. They could have made it, made it up for all I care. Yeah. But it does make you think. Mm. Like... China. Yeah. yeah. I just... I found it fascinating. So That is fascinating. You know, that I think algorithm it, it, In the future, could algorithms... Could people design apps like that and the algorithms be designed to make nations more stupid yeah. or less... You know, or more clever. Again, like with the China stuff, they were saying how they're showing more... They're celebrating... Like, you know, new stuff and like engineering and whether it's entrepreneurship or whether it's that intellectual side of it, they use it to show that more. Because there could be stupid dance in China, but they just go, nah, I'm not going to show that to people. Stupid. Yeah. You've been an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Whereas in America, they go, yeah, wrap that up. Like, yeah. So that's everything. Wrap that up. Yeah. More of that. I just find it. That's why probably Liver King's so. so I, um, I, I was listening to a podcast the other day about this and uh, it was. Um, I can't remember who it was. It was on Stephen Bartlett's pod podcast, but I don't know if you saw this, but he was talking about AI in the future and we're something like only nine years away from computers being smarter than humans. Yeah. Like nine years. And he was saying that in 20 years, that the com like the world will be ruled by AI. It doesn't necessarily mean like the, the iRobot style thing where yeah. they're going to take over and there's going to be all war between, but like they're going to be the, the, the kind of the smartest things on the planet. Like... It was kind of a scary, scary thing to it's think scary. about. It was like, it's a lot closer than what you think, that mm. we've got stuff that does this, this, that, the other. I was thinking, fuck me. Like, that is a, a mad thing, like, yeah. that in our lifetime, that it's progressed. I mean, it's quickly. not hard because there's people doing TikTok dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not hard. No, it's not hard. Smart than us, uh, but, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, think, I, I think, like, Nintendos are probably smart, <laughs> smarter than half the, po half the population, <laughs> especially the demographic of this podcast. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the snares, mate. You know, a calculator. Yeah. Solar powered calculator. But, um, so it's slagging probably. you off. It's slagging yeah. you off. So. Yeah, yeah. They, they won't know. They don't care. Anyway, have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your week or weekend. Whenever you listen to this podcast, you can listen to it whenever. So it's and that's the beauty of it. It's pointless saying that. That's the beauty of it. Have a good one. Whatever it could even be the future. It could be a, could be a computer listening It could be AI listening to this. Hope you're good. Hope you're good, yeah. Don't yeah. kill us. Yeah, please be nice. Yeah. <sighs>